Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 2015 horror film, Unfriended. And before I get into the review, I want to give a very special thanks to a YouTuber named Bill Bon Jovi. Um, he sent this to me in the mail, I want to say thank you. Uh, thanks, man. I mean, this is really cool. I mean, I, I've been wanting to see this film for a while now, so thanks to you, I was able to see this film on Blu-ray. And thanks for all the other stuff you sent me in the past, too. He's uh, been acquaintances with him and a friend on YouTube for a long time, and uh, he sent me some VHS in the past. I, I've, you know, sent him some stuff in return. He's sent me, you know, other things like uh, Return of the, uh, the Deadly Spawn DVD, on DVD as well as pieces and I just wanted to, wanted to make sure to give him uh, special thanks because he deserves it. Thanks a lot. Uh, so um, yeah, this is a film that I have honestly been looking forward to. I've been looking forward to this film ever since I saw the trailer. I thought about seeing it in theater but I was never able to find a theater near me that was really well, I mean, there's a theater, of course, there's a bunch of theaters showing it. I just wasn't able to get into a theater to see it. And um, so it was it was cool watching it on Blu-ray uh, in high def um, on my flat screen. Uh, and I didn't think, I think, I honestly thought it was a good movie. I liked it. It didn't disappoint me. Uh, there's some things I thought it could have done a little bit better or done differently, and I will talk about that later, but... Overall, I liked the movie. I thought it was actually a pretty... I thought it was actually a really good movie for what it was. I normally am not a fan of found footage, but this was a different enough take on it that it didn't seem like it was the same thing that I've seen a million times. Uh, it's not necessarily really a found footage movie. Uh, it's a point of view on the computer movie. Really, it's a completely different uh, sort of genre. Uh, and I'm usually not the biggest fan of, yeah, this kind of, this kind of, you know, biggest fan of this kind of stuff, so that's what really surprised me about the film, is how much I liked it, how much I was engaged by it, how much the film really captivated me. Uh, I was really sucked in, like, the movie, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen, I was that into the film. It was that well done, to be honest, uh, for me personally. Um, yeah, and Friended is a film that is, it's, it's a horror film, but it's also deals with some pretty heavy issues. It, it's not a, it's not a crowd pleaser. It's not a crowd pleasing horror movie. It deals with bullying. It deals with cyber bullying. And I think that was a nice touch. It was nice to see that. It was nice to see a horror film actually approach that subject. And since I've dealt with internet trolls before on YouTube, and I, I, I had been personally myself mercilessly bullied as a kid to the point, I don't even want to remember my childhood. It was that awful. So it's almost like it's a revenge fantasy for people who have been bullied to finally see their bullies get their comeuppance. So that was... I have to admit, it was it was nice to see that in that regard. It was a little bit of a uh, vindictive uh, catharsis, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, the film is... It's directed by Leo Gabrazade. I don't know if that's how you say his last name or not. But he this is his first film he's ever directed. He I thought he did a good job. It wasn't really a very... It, it could have easily looked very stagnant and very dull, considering it, most of the film is just from the point of view of a character just on her computer, but on Skype or on a chat or on Facebook or on YouTube. But the director and did a really good job making it cinematic, so it looked different than just what it would look like if you just recorded the cam you recorded your computer like if you're just there sitting on your computer using Camtasia and you just record what you're doing the, the film definitely felt like it had more to it than just that uh, and that's a large part due to the editing by Parker Laramie and Andrew Wesman as well who those did a really good job I thought 
And the film was made for like a million dollars, made fifty nine million, so it was a decent hit. Excuse me, just uh, turn out my sinuses a little bit. A decent hit. I mean, it's a one million dollar production. It was made for, and it made fifty nine. Uh, but for some reason, this Blu-ray has absolutely no features, special features whatsoever. Which, after looking on the trivia on at least none that are listed on the Blu-ray. And after looking at the trivia on IMDb, there was some interesting stuff I'll show share with you guys, and that I thought would have been more interesting. Would have been interesting to see a little bit more about the behind the scenes of the film, talking about how they made it and so forth. The film was written by Nelson Greaves, who was also one of the producers, along with Timur Beckman, 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 or however the fuck you pronounce his last name. And uh, the film went through different uh, names while it was uh, early, when it was in development. Different uh, versions of the screenplay as well, before they settled with the one that they used for the film. Uh, it initially had its world premiere on July 20, 2014, at the Fantasia F Film Festival. And it screened on the film festival circuit under the title Cybernatural. Uh, originally, the film was called Offline, and that's when Gabra, da Gabra Daze was attached to the project because he liked that it was focused uh, focused on the theme of bullying. And he noted that the nature of bullying had changed since he was in school as the internet allowed for bullies to continue their actions even after school hours. And then the film's title changed during shooting uh, as the film's crew felt that the title Offline was too general and not obvious, which it really is. And then, then, then the title of Cybernatural was more to the point of what it is, which is a shitty title. That's a terrible title. That's that's a really bad title. That's a title. That sounds like a title for a Sci-Fi Channel original movie made by the Asylum. It does. This is a shitty title. And and so the film's title was changed from Cybernatural to Unfriended when the film was theatrically released in April 17th of 2015, which was a good decision. It's definitely. Uh, and the film is also technically an independent film. Because it was screened in 2014, it was finished in 2014 for the most part, it wasn't released uh, theatrically in the U.S. and distributed in other countries until Universal picked it up and released it this year. So technically, Unfriended is an independent film. So once again, independent horror films are where it's at. It follows as an independent horror film that got a theatrical distribution. After it, I think it screened in some other, uh, uh, I think it screened in another country before the U.S. And I think it also screened in like a film festival. So, until a company picked it up to distribute it in theaters. So yeah. Two of the best horror films that I've seen this year that have been, have been in theaters are independent films. So anyway... So yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting about the sort of thing about the it had a different title and so forth, Cybernatural, which is really terrible. And I guess uh, all all the scenes were filmed in one house with all the cast members in different rooms except for Ken. And to keep the film suspenseful and believable, each of the actors had to take script alterations on the fly. And I mean, each take had script alterations on the fly. And the cast were encouraged to improvise and react to the unexpected story changes. Which was cool. It actually helped the film have um, more of a dynamic to it. It, would, it felt more... Uh, it felt it had more energy, life. It was... It flowed really well. More spontaneous. And I guess it was Shelley Hennig's idea to, to the producers to have them act out the entire film in one single take after going through long takes t lasting 10 minutes. And I never, did not know that this was shot in one take. And knowing that, because it was shot in one take in real time, with the characters and actual computers, the production lasted 16 days total, including 6 12-hour days of principal photography. And so, that makes the performances in the film even more impressive to me, because they shot it all in one take. I thought they did a really good job. I thought everyone who was involved with the performances, the actors, and the actresses, they were really good, I thought. I thought their performances were very natural, and they felt very real to me. I bought it. 
I really bought into it. Now, yeah, I'm just I'm just making sure there's not any more extra sort of stuff. Just, just checking. That's all. Okay. All right. Anyway, the film. So yeah, I thought that was some interesting sort of bits about the production, and the film stars Shelley Hennig as Blair Lilly. Now Shelley Hennig, she was in Ouija. That movie sucked. That movie is ten times worse than this. And, but she was one of the few things about Ouija I didn't mind. She played Debbie, and I think she's the one that killed her. Would died in the beginning of the film, the blonde. And I really liked her, actually. I thought she was actually one of the better parts of the film compared to the lead, Olivia Cook, who can't fucking act. So it was actually nice to see somebody who could actually act in the film from Ouija. So uh, I liked Shelley Hennig. I thought she did a solid job. She did a good job. Uh, excuse me for, you know, sniffling or whatever. I might be coming down with a cold. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, Moses Jacob Storm plays Mitch Russell, her uh, her boyfriend. Renee Olstead plays Jess Felton. Will Petz plays Adam Sewell. Jacob Wasaki plays Ken Smith. I thought he was he's the fat funny guy of the group, so to speak. He looks like a fat Jason Siegel from uh, How I Met Your Mother. And then you have Courtney Cal Halverson as Val Rommel. Heather Sussman as Laura Barnes. A few other actors who I don't even remember their role really in the film, and they all did a really good job, I thought. And the film's story is really simple. Unfriended is I looked at it as a revenge film, uh, from the point of view of what used to be Laura's best friend Blair. The film pretty much is entirely from the point of view of Blair, Shelley Hennig, while she's on her computer. On Facebook, watching YouTube videos, the movie opens up with a bang, literally, which she sees a video of Laura Barnes' suicide, which I guess in other cuts of the film and other versions of the movie, there was going to be more people committing suicide. It wasn't just going to be Laura Burns. But I like the way that they did it here, where they didn't have more than one. It was just one person. And so... I mean, Laura Barnes, really not Burns, but, you know, Laura Barnes, my bad. And so, she, Laura Barnes shoots herself because of a video that, that leaked on the internet. Uh, it was really embarrassing, where she was drunk one night, and somebody shot a video of her basically being incontinent, where she had shat herself. And then there was a video, then on the video, there was words on the screen that said, Laura Barnes, kill yourself. Which is just awful. And this this is definitely, this is definitely not a crowd, like I was saying earlier, this isn't a crowd pleaser. This isn't, a, this isn't one of those crowd pleasing horror films. This is, this deals with some pretty heavy subject material. And I actually thought it did a pretty good job with it. Because you definitely did feel for Laura Barnes. You definitely did feel for her. Now, the film does try to make you feel that she was also a bully with one video you see, but I don't think she's a bully. I just think she just was defending herself. She was standing up for herself with a video, just calling out, you know, these... She called them. She said, a bunch of stupid cunts, you know, fake-ass bitches. And I actually do, you know, I, I can't really relate to that because, for one, I'm not a girl, and I don't deal with that sort of uh, social interaction, which I know is a lot different than... I mean, girls, the way girls bully other girls is, is actually a lot different than guys bullying other guys. There's a different dynamic going on there. So I can't really truly understand it. But I do, uh, what I do understand is that it's not right, whatever the, the girls, whatever she was dealing with. And so I, I don't have a problem with her making a video standing up for herself. I don't think that's bullying. I, th I think that's just standing up for yourself and calling them out. On their bullshit. And so. Then the rest of the film. Like I said. Is just through Blair's point of view. I mean. Starts out with her. With a chat with her boyfriend Mitch. Trying to show him some tits. Before she. Before he can see some titties. Uh, the. the Her friends. Do get a group. End up calling them on Skype. So it's a group call now. 
and then they have an unexpected guest. This user named Billy, named Billy227, who claims to be Laura Barnes. And, of course, uh, everyone thinks it's a bunch of bullshit, it's just a prank, some troll. And uh, she goes on, uh, Blair goes on Facebook, Laura's communicating with her on there, she's like, stop this, I'm going to report you. And uh, she tries to unfriend her. She can't. Mitch tells her Professor Page she unfriends. Laura on Facebook. Laura responds back, says you shouldn't have done that, Blair. Even communicates through the, to them on Skype. But you it, and I, I really like the fact that a lot of the film took place in Skype because I'm on Skype all the time chatting with my friends. So that me really made it relatable to me. And the whole stuff with YouTube and the point. Of, and I love the point of view. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was ingenious. The approach that this film had to to go from entirely the point of view of one girl on her computer one night. I thought that was genius. I thought that was really, really inventive. And a really good twist and spin on a pretty traditional found footage concept. Now, I know some people have problems with the lack of character development. Uh, to teach their own. I, I have no problem with people who have a problem with that. I thought I had plenty because it starts out without really knowing that much about these characters, which is real, which is realistic. If I'm on a conversation with my friends on Skype or the video chat or an audio chat, I don't know about their pack, their past. I don't know about their backstory. All I know is what they tell me. And if we're getting on the internet one night, we're just chatting. We're not talking about what happened when I, we were growing up or any of that shit. We, didn't, we, we don't talk about that. There's no character development there. That's what I actually liked it about the film is that it was more realistic like that. It felt like a real chat. And it felt like it happened in real time. And I think if they did anything else other than what they did in this film, it would be a bit of a stretch for me personally. Well, what are they going to do? Were they going to have 20, 30 minutes of the movie not be from the point of view of Blair or be like a traditional film where they shoot it normally, give you backstories of all of these characters? I didn't need that. I didn't need backstories of all of these characters. I knew enough about them from the beginning to know that they were likable people. They probably had their own problems, but so does everybody. They weren't perfect, but they seemed like nice people and they seemed like people you want to hang out with. And then as the film goes along and Laura Barnes starts un unveiling their secrets, then you realize that they're not who you think they are. Then you get the character development. You get the character development as the film goes on. You just didn't get it right off the bat because it was trying to be more realistic. And, th and I actually liked that approach. It, it made me... It, it made me more engaged in the film because I was like, this this looks like a real chat. Like, if I was just a part of this chat, it, it felt like you were, while, while you're watching the movie, you were also a part of this chat, this video chat and part of this experience. And that made it very unique. And and, and I do agree with uh, Michael Gingold of Fangor, where you've never experienced fear like this before. I haven't. I've never seen a film like this before or since. Was it really that scary? According to Fangoria, like fear, not really. I wasn't really scared by the film, but there's a lot of uh, horror movies don't scare me nowadays. Anyway, it takes a lot to scare me. I got a pretty strong stomach, and uh, you know, it takes a lot to scare me. So, but I did. I did think it was creepy. The idea of a uh, ghost from beyond the grave communicating through Facebook and doing all that kind of stuff. That was pretty messed up sending Facebook messages and impersonating your friends and posting pictures of other friends and incriminating them and making them look bad and then they blame you and they're like I didn't do anything and then it's like no bullshit you posted those pictures it's your name on Facebook it's your account it's like I didn't do anything I didn't even touch the fucking computer I didn't even touch the, the touch the keyboard how the fuck could I post anything and, and so you know so there the, that was a nice aspect of the film that I and I thought like I said I thought the actors did a great job and it was bad acting I thought it was actually really good acting from all the actors involved because they just, just felt real it didn't feel like it didn't even look like acting to me it looked like these are actual real people just communicating with each other and then dealing with this crazy 
vengeful ghost on Skype. I mean, there's an argument between Renee Olstead and Courtney Halverson, which I thought was totally realistic. And uh, Gabra Zade actually instructed them to watch dozens of recorded web chat videos between friends, which resulted in arguments, in order to pre prepare for the argument between Jess and Val over the tagged photos. And Olstead and Halverson commented, however, they could not believe after watching the videos that they did that they did that this is the lengths modern teenagers would go to online to argue. But it was. They couldn't believe it, but it was, and so they ended up uh, incorporating that into their performance. And the film's uh, 83 minutes. It goes by at a pretty quick pace, I thought. Kept me engaged. There were moments where I thought it actually felt like a two-hour long film because time was actually going by a lot slower than the running time. But this is actually a good thing because it made it feel like there was more time that had passed uh, instead of just an hour and 16 minutes or whatever, which really is probably less than that. I mean, it's 83 minutes. I mean, if an hour, 10 minutes is, is 70, uh, an hour and 60. Yeah, 83. Yeah, it's about an hour and 60 minutes, I mean, with the end credits. I mean, without the end credits. So, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty short film. And I liked how it was short and to the point. And it did not go super in-depth on the characters. It gave us enough as the film went along where you figured out who these people really are. You're like, wow, these people are a bunch of assholes. You find out about, spoiler, you find out about Blair and how she's not innocent and how she's the one that shot the video that made her friend kill herself. And you're like, wow, what a bitch. <laughs> I mean... You're just like, well, bitch, you deserve what's coming to you then. So, uh, you know, karma's a bitch. <laughs> and now you're dead. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, like Matt said in his review, that one of the main points of the film is don't be a dick. <laughs> really, don't be an asshole. If these people weren't assholes, if they didn't have secrets to hide that they probably would have taken with them to their grave, they would not have been in any sort of danger. But... That's not the case. And I guess we were like, well, I don't like the film because I don't like these characters. I don't know anything about them, and I hate them. Well, you're supposed to. You're not supposed to know that much about them because you're, you're dropped right into a real-time, real-live Skype chat conversation. You're not supposed to know that much about them other than, okay, here are these characters. They're, you know, they have some, like, personalities here and there. It's it's, it's just every bit of, it's... The character development in this is just as good as anything in a slasher movie. So I, I don't really have a problem with any character development. That's not a negative for me at all. And and I, do, I hate these characters. You're supposed to. That's the point. As the film goes on, you're supposed to not like these characters. So then what what happens to them is, just, is, is they're just desserts, so to speak. It's, it, it's one of those... Uh, Moral stories, moral moral horror uh, stories, like a Tales from the Crypt episode or something, where you did bad deeds and now you're gonna get it. You know, no, that you're 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 gonna pay for for your sins when you reap what you sow. So I I really didn't have a problem with that approach at all. And as the film goes along, they try to kick out the Billy from the Skype chat. They succeed in doing it with a Trojan. Billy's like, you shouldn't have done that. You know, because earlier, the ghost of Laura Barnes had communicated with uh, Blair and said, if you hang up, all your friends will die. And she's like, a bush, whatever, bullshit. And they hang up, and then, of course, well, her, her friends fucking die. That's what happened. You, you, you didn't fucking listen. This, don't hang up. Even before, while they're doing the Trojan, and they're trying to call for help for Val, when she they think she has hurt herself or is this has a seizure They're trying to call the cell phone they get, they get the 911 call and then it says don't hang up whatever you do don't hang up I thought that was a pretty chilling moment where the ghost was communicating through the dispatch line of 911 and Laura warned every warned them Maybe none of this would have happened. Maybe none of these people would have died if they did not hang up. If they, if they, if they, you know, that's the thing. Maybe Ken wouldn't have died if he had to hang up. Well, he hung up, and now they're all going to die. So, uh, 
And people are like, well, that's that solves the whole, you know, one of the number one questions people might have with this film. Or why don't they just hang up? And they can't. They hang up. They die. Why don't they just get off the internet and log off? They can't. They log off. You die. That's the whole thing. It solves that right off the bat. You can't just shut the computer off and walk away. You can't just unfriend somebody on Facebook. You can't just do this or that. You log off. You die. And I like the fact how the film actually incorporated the the ghost taking over uh, Val. You know, not Val, but um, Blair's computer, where you know making play songs that relate to what's going on in the film when they start revealing all their secrets. And you it plays a song called Lies, 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 Nothing But Lies. I was just like, ha, ha, ha. And she can't mute it. She can't mute it. She tries to mute it and the computer won't let her. There's other things she tries to uh, block uh, or, or kick out the Skype, you know, conversation of uh, Billy, but she can't do it. She can't unfriend Billy. Refreshes the page, able to unfriend her, but she shows up back again. So tries to close the Facebook page, can't do it. I like that whole aspect where it's like, well, what are you waiting for? Send a re reply, send us the message. It's like, I can't do it, I can't. So what do you mean you can't do it? It's like, I can't, there's no forward button. So that's the kind of stuff that I, I actually really liked about the film. And uh, as the film goes along, you know, these people reveal their secrets. They get knocked off one by one. Uh, the first person to die is Val, and then you have Ken, who, decently gory death, where he puts his neck into blunder and gets chopped up. Pretty choppy scene, though, you barely really, you don't really see it that much. And then you have Jess, who gets a, a curling iron jammed in her mouth, because she talks too much. Now, I didn't mind that, but I honestly felt that the original concept they had was a little bit better because originally with the with the the original draft of uh, unfriended it featured an alternate version of Jess's demise in which as her lights are on in her room she's pulled away by an invisible Laura violently bashed back and forth off the walls while still under Laura's thrall and then she falls to the ground with a concealed hacksaw that saws off her left left arm Bleeding out to death as Blair watches Jess's Facebook cover photo become a graphic mimicking her attack and death. The alternate version Facebook page replica, I guess, can be viewed on YouTube. And I actually like that. That would have had a little bit more gore. Added a little bit more gore to the film. Uh, Mitch's death is... Uh, you have uh, the death of uh, Adam. It's He it shoots himself. It's, it's there. or It's not really anything to write home about. Mitch, he ends up, uh, I don't, I forget, I forgot what happened to him. Like, he got flung across the room or slammed down or something. It just, it just seemed like a little, little bit kind of generic how he died. No, no, what happened is like a knife. He has a knife that he was playing around with early in the film and he it stabs him in the eye or in the mouth. He was like in the face somewhere, definitely. And, and, and the effect, honestly, it was, it was all right, but you could tell they had a low budget to work with. And then, of course, you have Blair herself, who she gets killed by Laura. And that's how the film ends, pretty much. So, yeah, straightforward plot, really. It's about these point of view of one girl who used to be uh, Laura Barnes' best friend on her computer. Laura Barnes comes back from beyond the grave, torments them, asks them to play a game of Never Have I Ever with fun, you know. And I actually like the game. I like the, I like that. It was pretty suspenseful, actually, the, the, the sequence where they had to play the game. Never have I ever. And that's where they reveal their secrets, and they're pretty shocking. You're like, wow, holy shit. Like stuff like uh, Blair fucked Mitch's best friend, Adam. And that, that the reaction, I, I really like the performance by uh, the actor who plays uh, Mitch in that sequence. Um uh, Moses Jacob Storm, because I totally believe it. It's totally believable to me. So it's like, you what? You you were saving yourself for me, you fucking slut. You know, it's like, you fucking slut. How many fucking times did you fuck him? How many fucking times did you do it? 
And Blair's like, babe, babe, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, it wasn't anything, it was, it was, I was, I was drunk, it was like, oh, fuck it, shut the fuck up, you fucking slut, what the fuck did you think, I thought you were, well, you loved me, and it was like, it was like, I mean, did, did. so, so, I thought it was actually pretty believable, uh, this, uh, these outpourings of emotion between all of these characters while they were playing this game, drinking game called Never Have I Ever, where you put up five fingers, if you, if um, when you when some you say never have I ever for example, fucked, you know, uh, uh, Blair, then you would put down one finger. You put down a finger if you've done it, and whoever puts down all their fingers dies. So, and I like how the Skype uh, actually had a countdown on it. Where Laura from Beyond the Gate Grave was making the Skype actually count down from like 30 seconds or 10, from 10 seconds down to one, and that added to the suspense of it. And that's where a lot of your character development comes from, in uh, the last little bit of half of the film, which I thought it was was building up to it, and it definitely did work because I was like, holy shit, wow. And yeah, I admit normally. If this is any other type of film, the fact that these characters are unlikable, I wouldn't like. But the thing is, they're not unlikable from the beginning of the movie. They're unlikable as the film goes on when you find out their true selves. And what they're hiding. This is an example of a, of a really shitty slasher movie horror film where they're unlikable assholes from the very beginning of the movie. And they stay unlikable assholes all the way until the end of the film. This is an example of a movie where they're not that unlikable from the beginning, it's just... Once you once it's revealed that they're pretty awful people, then they're unlikable, and then they start dying. So it just really doesn't bother me. It doesn't, and yeah, like I said, I mean the whole concept of uh, cyber bullies getting their comeuppance is definitely something I I, I definitely like seeing. It was it was a uh, first, and it was something that was nice to see. And, uh, yeah, I liked the approach the film had. I loved the point of view. The way they did it was great. I really loved the point of view of a Blair on her computer. The, the use of Skype and Facebook and YouTube is really well done. But, uh, if I was going to say anything about any sort of problems I had with the film, I would say, uh, mainly I could have used a little bit more gore. That's just the type of guy I am. Kills could have been a little bit better, or show me a little bit more of it, and the ending. The ending, the way it ends, hurts the film for me. I think it prevents it from being a great movie. The ending just seemed, it's, it's cliched. It's a cliched horror ending. It's a cliched found footage ending, and I thought it was building up to something a lot better. And something that I think would have really made the film great and really made it stand out. And my idea for the ending and where I thought it was going was this. The film pretty much ends, spoiler, with Blair being revealed as the person who shot the vid embarrassing video that ultimately led to Laura Barnes killing herself. You find out, spoiler, Mitch uploaded it. And he dies first. And then you have... Blair's the only one left now. And the video is posted on Facebook. The incriminating video. Because it's the full video. Not just the... Little bit that was edited on YouTube. And... All her friends on Facebook automatically are like, you're a horrible person. I'm unfriending you. I'll never talk to you ever again. You killed her, you, you bitch. Like, all that. So now she's dealing with a flood of all these comments. So now not only all her friends are dead, but now all her friends on the internet, all her Facebook, her, her whole reputation, everything's been destroyed. Now she's finally getting to feel the pain that Laura felt before she killed herself. And then it's just over in an instant. She's put out of her misery real quick, quick, quickly by Laura, the ghost of Laura, who comes in and kills her. And then the movie ends. And that's where that 
concept was talking about earlier, that's what I thought. That's how I thought the film was going to end. I thought it was building up to that, where it's going to leave Blair alive, to leave her alive and have to deal with the pain and the suffering that her friend dealt with before she killed herself. So I honestly think the film would have been a lot better if it ended like that, because that's really giving the bully the ultimate comeuppance. That's that's putting her through a living hell. That's putting her through exactly what you went through. And not just a little bit. Because Laura didn't just go through a little bit on the internet or Facebook for a little bit. And people say you're horrible. No. She went with probably months and days of that embarrassment. And then finally decided to kill herself. Because of it. Because all these people were telling her to kill herself. So Blair, she should have dealt with the same thing. Now, not the whole the maybe kill herself type of thing, but I just I just think that would have been better. If I were Laura Barnes, coming back from the grave to get my revenge after I killed all her friends, I don't even know if I really would have done that, because it's just me personally, but I would post a video and then she would feel my pain and she would lose lose all her friends anyway that way. I wouldn't even have to kill anybody if I were in her position. I just go from beyond the grave, post a full video that shows that she's the one that shot the video and bam. All her friends are you're horrible. Oh my god, what the fuck is wrong with you, Blair? All that. So, you know, it would just be that would be the ultimate victory. Put her through living hell. Put her through. Make her li live through exactly what Laura had had dealt with. So I thought that would have been much more of a fitting end for Blair. But no, they went the very cliched, uh, predictable route, which hurt the film for me because we're just like, really, you really need to end like every other movie. I mean, you had a perfect setup for this ending that I that I thought you were going for. And you were leading up to it. And then, no, it's just this cliched, been there, done that, found footage, horror film ending. Ghost goes, ah! And then, ah and then that's it. That was, uh... But anyway, that's, that's, that's the, one of the main things that really hurt the film. You know, for me, it, it made it so it... It's a good movie. It's a film I actually really enjoyed for the most part. I just didn't... I don't think it's a great film because of that ending. But anyway... Uh, but it's not an ending that's so shitty that it makes the movie terrible. No, it's not like that. But I just thought it could have... The film could be much better if it had the ending I was talking about. Putting Blair through a living hell. Instead of putting her, putting her out of her misery really make her suffer if you really wanted to be you know stick it to her so to speak but anyway uh i really don't know what else to say about the film except it was ran out of five stars i would give unfriended i would say you know a little bit more i could use a little bit more gore so a little bit more shots of the violent of the deaths um maybe use that alternate uh cut of jess jess's death and a better ending and overall, that's why I would give the film 4 out of 5. I, I think it's a really solid film for the most part. I just think there was something, those little things to me, meant a lot to me personally. And just, I would have, it would have made the film a lot better if it had a little bit more of those elements for me personally. But I still like the film. I thought it had good performances by the cast and crew because I felt it felt realistic because it shot it all in one take. Uh... And, um, so it definitely did feel like that. It felt like a video chat in real time. And I really love the concept from the point of view of Blair on her computer. And, uh, yeah. I didn't find the film, film boring. And I thought there was enough character development for me. Definitely from, I, I thought there was enough of it for my taste. But, uh, yeah. 
It's not a it's not a happy go lucky, you know, everyone's smiling movie. Neither was it follows. It follows it dealt with some tough subject material as well. This deals with bullying and stuff like that. And uh the bullies get bullied. The cyber bullies get bullied. They get their comeuppance and I don't know, it was some there's the, that that just that alone was enough uh reason for me to enjoy the film because I mean, I guess if you haven't really experienced that before, if you haven't been cyberbullied, if you haven't been bullied, then you're probably not going to get the cathartic feeling that you you will probably get if you have dealt with that kind of stuff watching this movie. But anyway, uh, yeah, definitely one of the better films I've seen this year, and definitely uh, was worth the watch, and, and I'm definitely glad I have it, thanks to Bill Bon Jovi, and uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Unfriended, and I will see you guys later. See ya.